there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. Not a bird, not a plane, not even a frog. Just little low me, Underdog. There's Betsy and his buddy Julie, go, 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 first on the run. The stories of McBrag outrageous, no one could be more courageous. The hunter chased the fox, he tutors on the rocks, and then there's Underdog! 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 Speed and lightning! Lord of Thunder! Fighting all In solving the robbery of the hopeless diamond, the heroic underdog had captured Tap Tap the Chiseler, who bore an amazing resemblance to Underdog himself. Now Tap Tap was in jail, and his hatred of Underdog grew stronger every day. <laughs> then, suddenly, Tap Tap was laughing. <laughs> What's with you, Tap Tap? What's to laugh at in prison? That's just it, cellmate. I won't be in prison after today. Underdog is going to get me out. Read that newspaper. Hmm. Underdog to visit prison at warden's request. Yeah? So? I'm going to have an underdog disguise. When he walks in, I walk out. <laughs> hmm. So it was that the next morning, Underdog entered prison. Underdog! We're very glad to have you inspect our prison. Let me show you around. One of the things I'd like to see is if Tap Tap the Chiseler still looks like me. Little did Underdog know that Tap Tap now looked exactly like him and was at that very moment hiding outside the door. Now the first thing I'd like you to see is uh, the recreation room. <laughs> Gee, Underdog, you leaving already? Uh, yes, I uh, had an emergency call for help. Well, come again. <laughs> and now, to put the next part of my plan into action, Underdog is in for a big surprise. The first thing Tap Tap did was to visit a bomb factory. Underdog, what can we do for you? I want a small bomb to carry around with me. For you, Underdog, anything, and, and no questions asked. Here's our latest model. Just push the button, and kaboom. Next, Tap Tap approached a friendly policeman. I wonder if I might borrow your handcuffs for a few hours. Or oh, sure, Underdog, anything for you. And finally, Tap Tap visited the studio where Sweet Polly Purebred, top reporter, was reporting the news. And so, dear viewers, it looks like the news from... Underdog! What are you doing here? What is this? Why are you handcuffing us together? Because, sweet Polly, I'm not Underdog. I'm Tap Tap the Chiseler. <coughs> and I'm warning Underdog over the TV that unless he comes to us and does exactly as I say, I will push the button on this bomb and blow us both to bits. Immediately advised of what had happened, Underdog quickly left the prison. When Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go! You beast! Underdog will never do as you say. Just wait till he gets here. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Wrong, Underdog. There's plenty to fear. Sweet Polly is handcuffed to me, and if you don't do what I say, I'll blow us both to bits. <laughs> For just one minute, I'll listen to you. What evil deed would you have me do? First, bring me a million bucks from the bank. 
Then promise you'll never bother me again. Don't do it, Underdog. Underdog pretended to think it over, but actually he was using his cosmic ray vision to melt the chain of the handcuffs. Then, like a bullet, he blew a tap-tap. Oh, Underdog, are you hurt? Sticks and stones would break his bones, but even bombs will not hurt me. Oh, Underdog, you're wonderful. Hmm, that's a matter of opinion. Chumley, this ad is just what I've been looking for. Wanted. Two helpers to learn jewelry business. Apply Stonecutter's Jewelry Store. Come on. Any penguin, any walrus yet? Well, all right, but remember this. There's a million dollars worth of diamonds in the store, and if anything happens to any of them, you'll go to jail. Understand? Uh, sure. Uh, sure, Mr. Stonecutter. All right. I'll be back in an hour. And don't forget what I said. Well, Chumley, let's get to work and clean up this place. You take this broom, and I'll start the dusting. Chumley... Will you please take off that ridiculous handkerchief and stop playing games? Listen, Boo Boo. This is a hold-up, see? And you better do like I say or I'll play you two goofs a tune on my violin. Now scrape all the diamonds into the bag. Sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> bye bye, boo boos. <laughs> Chumley, if we don't get back those diamonds, Mr. Stonecutter will send us to jail. Come on, we've got to follow that crook. Hold on there, Matches. Let's have a look at your tickets. We haven't got any tickets. We're chasing a jewel robber, and he just ran by here. A jewel robber, is it? Aye. Why, you must be balmy. That was our most important passenger. Count Maninoff. Count? Uh, he's no count. Stand aside, sailor. We'll take this up with the captain. Yeah, hey, boss, give these swabs a hand ashore. You know, the old evil. Uh, wait a minute. Now, watch out there. Now, you're, I'm falling. Careful now, Chumley. We've got to get aboard that ship and find those diamonds. This is just like in the circus, Tennessee. We're tightrope walkers, just like... Oops! Let go, Chumley! Watch out! I'm falling! I can't... Whoops! Phew! That was close. Uh, yeah, Tennessee. Give us enough rope and we'll hang ourselves. Quiet, Chumley, and keep climbing. We're almost up to the ship. Oh, nice to see you, mateys. It's sad you have to be leaving so sudden-like. <laughs> uh, gee, Tennessee, that was wet. Let's give up, huh? Don't be ridiculous, Chumley. If we don't get those diamonds, we go to jail. Now, come on. I've got a new plan. Your swabs. That's all the loading. Cast off! We made it, Chumley. Now all we have to do is get to the captain and explain our problem. Nothing can go wrong now. Radio message, Captain. Came in just as we cast off. Let me see. Be on lookout for Penguin and Walrus wanted for theft of one million dollars in diamonds. Come in. How do you do, Captain? My name is... Uh, it's them. The Diamond Thieves. Yo! Help 
Mighty, off to their suit, the dormant thieves. <laughs> Looks like we lost them for the moment. Yeah, but what are we going to do, Tennessee? They think we're the thieves. You're right. That's why we'll never get back those diamonds. The only thing we can do now is hide out until the ship docks and then go find other diamonds to replace the stolen ones. Yeah, but gee, Tennessee, where can we find diamonds? Where? Well, uh, we go to, uh, we, uh, we take a, uh, we find some, uh, Oh, excuse me, sir. I was just... Mr. Whoopi. Well, boys, fancy meeting you here. It's your lucky for us, Mr. Whoopi. We need somebody to tell us about diamonds. A jewel of a subject. <laughs> Get it? Jewel of a subject? Oh, yes. Well, well, my boy, come along to my stateroom so we can use the three-dimensional blackboard. Well, strangely enough, a lump of coal or the lead in an ordinary pencil is the same material as a diamond. They sure don't look the same. No, my boy, but they are all carbon. Only the diamond is highly crystallized carbon. Most scientists agree the diamonds were formed some hundred million years ago when hot liquid rock underground was subjected to terrific heat and pressure, causing the rock to become diamonds. Uh, if diamonds are only rocks, Mr. Whoopi, uh, why do they cost so much money? For two reasons, my boy. First, because of their great reflection of light. That's why they make such beautiful jewels. And second, because of their hardness. Diamonds are actually the hardest substance known to man. That's why they're used for tools such as drills that can bore through stone. Where do they dig up diamonds, Mr. Whoopi? They have found some in India and some in Brazil and even a few in the United States. But the really important diamond mines are in Africa. Hear that, Chumley? What we have to do is get to Africa and dig up the diamonds. Now, hold on, Tennessee. Diamonds are big business. There are deep mines with large shafts, just as for coal mining. And I'm afraid the mine owners wouldn't let you in. Uh, gee, that's not very friendly-like. Well, even if they did let you in, and even if you did find a diamond, there would be lots of work to be done before it looked like a jewel. Cutting. Shaping. Cleaning and polishing. And all this must be done by highly trained experts. And that lets us out, Chumley. It looks like we're licked. Perhaps I can help, Tennessee. Why do you need diamonds? Search every cabin, mighties. We'll find the blinking crooks yet. There's your answer, Mr. Whoopi. They think Chumley and I robbed a jewelry store, only it was really Rocky Mononoff. Come on, Chumley. <laughs> But wait! Wait! Got him? And just look at the diamonds. Hold everything. It seems there's been a mistake. This is our crook. The notorious Rocky Mananoff. But how did you find out? Your friend, Mr. Whoopi. He explained everything. Mr. Whoopi, you're a gem. Uh, you're a diamond in the rough. A jewel. Uh, a sparkler. Or to make it very clear, Phineas J. Whoopi, you're the greatest. One morning, Colonel Kit Coyote, proceeding according to Army Regulation 2645, was checking the stores of the fort in Gopher Gulch. Fifty bags of beans. Check. Four barrels of crackers. Check. Three jars of honey. Uh, two. I said three. T-H-R-E-E-E. -E -E. Uh, begging the Colonel's pardon, but there's only two. T-O-O-O. -O -O. We've been robbed. Robbed. Look around for clues, Sergeant. Well, here's a lot of clues, Colonel. Indian tracks, plain as day. 
It's those gopher Indians. I knew it. After them, Sergeant. Colonel Miss Honey. <laughs> Soon he be on our trail. You got him planned? <laughs> Whoopie doopie, you am genius. Aha, uh-huh, Sergeant, the trail leads right into that hollow log. We've got them now. I wouldn't be too sure. Nonsense, Sergeant. Follow me. Charge! <laughs> Mmm. <laughs> Need him some more honey. All right, Sergeant. Let's get on with the checking. Two jars of honey. One. One? They've struck again. I'll catch those two if it's the last thing I do. Oh, Colonel be mad? You got them planned? <laughs> Colonel, get him stuck? Whoopie <laughs> doopie. Look, Sergeant, behind that bush. Indians. Let's go. Begging the Colonel's pardon, but I think we ought to check first and. Nonsense. Army Regulation 6245 specifically says when in doubt, shout. Cheer! Him get him stuck, all right. Oh, you want a more honey? <laughs> all right, now let's get on with the job. One jar of honey. No jars of honey. No jars. They've done it again. I can't stand it. This is the last straw. Back on the trail, Sergeant. Nothing's going to stop us this time. Colonel Beam, very mad. We take him all the honey. Him be hot on trail. We get him help? Where? Whoopie-doopie, you am sharp today. The trail's very clear, Sergeant. It leads right into that cave. That's where they're hiding. Uh, Begging the colonel's pardon, but the sign says, do not disturb. An obvious Indian trick. Sergeant, follow me. Watch our next adventure. It ought to be a honey, too. There, Africa. Did I tell you about the time I bagged a lion without firing a shot? Sometime I would really enjoy. I'd gone to Africa in search of rare insects. I had no trouble catching specimens for my collection because my powerful magnifying glass made even the tiniest insect look large as an elephant. Then I spotted a very unusual insect fluttering about the top of the tall grass. I grabbed it. I realized that I had made a slight mistake and started to apologize, but the lion started after me. I had come to the edge of a cliff. Below me was a river full of man-eating crocodiles, and the lion was closing in. 
It looked like the end. Good heavens, I should think so. But thinking quickly, I held up my powerful magnifying glass. It made me look like a giant. I roared... and frightened the life out of the beast. With a magnifying glass. Magnificent. Quite. Now be quiet, Tudor. It's just time for the favorite show of mine. Do you want to be a star? Well now, Mr. Wizard, that's sort of what I come over here to see you about. I'd like to be one of them old-time vaudeville stars. You mean go on the stage? But what would you do? Oh, I'd like to give them a sample of the old uh, soft shoe. Well, it's a good ambition. Mm, go ahead, Tudor. Remember to practice hard. The first thing the new song and dance man must do is to get a good agent what will get him into the best shows. Come in, my boy, come in. See all the new salt swallow they sent me. Yes, indeed, beautiful epiglottis. Uh, here's one to try for size. Uh, wrong size, eh? Well, here's... Uh, well, wait up, Mr. Agent. Uh, I'm not no sword swallower. Fire eater, then, eh? Animal trainer? High diver? Well, what is it, my boy? Sounds like you're not an entertainer at all. No, I'm a dancer, Mr. Agent. Uh, I do the old soft shoe. Soft shoe, eh? Might have known it. All right, my boy. Uh, let's have a little sample. Let's see a trip the light fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. The act seems to fall a little short of perfection, my boy. In fact, one look at your dance singing, I can tell you're a banjo player. A singing banjo player, that's it. What's your name? Uh, Tudor Turtle, sir. Tudor Turtle, you say? Need something more up to the minute, like uh, Moonshot. Moonshot, the singing banjo player. The moonshot. <laughs> Sounds like I'm really ready to start off with a bang. <laughs> yeah. Don't try comedy, son. You haven't got the zing. With a new name and a perfectly rehearsed act, the song and dance man is ready. Somebody stole my gal. Somebody stole my pal. Somebody came and... What what do we do now, Mr. Agent? Very simple, my boy. We need a gimmick, that's all. Something to make the little customers forget your singing. That's it. We'll put you in the rodeo. The only singing banjo player who rides ropes and brands cattle. We'll change your name to Marlon Brandine. Yes, indeed. And soon, at the rodeo... Somebody stole my pearl. Somebody stole my pearl. Somebody came and took her away. They didn't even say she was leaving. <laughs> Don't worry, my boy. I've got a completely new gimmick already worked out. We're putting you in the county fair. You'll do your act hanging upside down from the bottom of an aeroplane. We'll call you, let's see now, Daryl Devil. That's it, yes, indeed. And very soon, high over the county fair... Somebody stole my girl! Somebody stole my pal! Somebody came and took her away! Look there, Angus. I'm sure it's the yellow-bellied squalor. Haven't seen one in years. Let's get him. Help! Somebody shoot at me! Help, Mr. Wizard! This show business is for the birds! Yeah. What else can I do? Drizzle, 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 drone. Time for this one to come home.